Hey, welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. We are on to Quantum Numbers Part 2. Uh, in the last episode, uh, we introduced the concept of quantum numbers and electrons' address. And uh, we went through the first two. So we talked about what N was and we talked about what L was. Uh, we'll finish up today talking about the last uh, two quantum numbers. That shouldn't take too long. And then we will talk about um, Pauli, Wolfgang Pauli, and what he said about where electrons can live. And so... Uh, Last time we talked about L, L was the uh, type of orbital you have, and M sub L indicates which one of those you live in. But for orbitals, that means it's configuration. If you remember last time, there were uh, when we run into a P subshell, there's three Ps. When we run into a D subshell, there's five uh, orbitals. And when we run into an F subshell, there's actually seven orbitals. So we might know where an electron lives, what subdivision it lives in, but we need an address. And so M sub L is really the electron's address. Now, just like L had a code dependent on N, M sub L has a code dependent on L. So uh, depending on what L you're in, you could have different possible addresses. And it's pretty straightforward. If your L is zero, then obviously there can only be one address because if you remember, there was only one S orbital. And so uh, M sub L would be zero. The address for the zero, for the zero subshell, um, for the S subshell on every energy level is always zero. All right? Because uh, there's only one, so it's not a big deal. Now, it's weird naming something as an address of zero, but it could happen. Someone could have a zero Elm Street house. It's weird, but it could happen. All right, it gets a little weirder when you start thinking about uh, P subshells, because then you have, uh, if, uh, as if L is 1, then M sub L could be 1, 0, or negative 1. And that represents the three different orientations of the P subshell. Uh, now again, it's sort of a weird way to give an address to a house. Uh, you'd have the negative 1 house, the 0 house, and the 1 house. Just remember those are arbitrary designations based on the code. It doesn't necessarily mean that one of those is like an anti-house or anything like that. It's just that you had a very uh, creative town planner. <laughs> those are the addresses you had. So just think about it, the house. And then finally, uh, M sub S uh, is simply the spin of the electron. Every orbital can hold two electrons, but electrons don't li really like each other, just like family members uh, or siblings. You, you know, if you had to share a seat, you, you probably don't want to get close to each other. You'd try to get as far away from each other as possible. And so M sub S just represents an electron's desire to get away from each other. And so you have two different spins, spin up or spin down. Um, represented by plus one half or minus one half. And really, as long as you have an M sub S that represents one or the other, you're in good shape. Doesn't really matter. Um, again, now which is clockwise and which is counterclockwise? That's all really sort of relative to your uh, frame of reference anyway. I mean, a clock's only clockwise if you're standing in front of it. Uh, if you were standing behind a clock and it was transparent, then clockwise would be counterclockwise, you know? So that can kind of blow your mind if you think about that. Um, but it's all a matter of perspective. And so one of the things Wolfgang Pauli did, and he did many things like, uh, you know, elucidating the existence of neutrinos, which is kind of neat. He said they must exist. Uh, and then later somebody discovered them. Uh, but Pauli also said that uh, inside an atom, uh, electrons must have unique sets of quantum numbers, which means they can't exist in the same spot. And I'm sure there's a lot of math to back that up. But the basic idea is, is that. Um, so we can wrap up this idea of quantum numbers with a little bit of hilarious uh, electron uh, humor here. Oh, <laughs> quanta. Oh, that's funny. Oh, <laughs> oh, and sorry, we're <laughs> anyway. So there's Pauli breaking in, pretty much saying the Pauli exclusion principle. Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, good times. And so what we can do is come up with a little pattern here. Uh, I, I, I can tell right there my uh, parentheses are a little off on the subshells, but you'll get the point here. If the, if the principal energy level is 1, right, then there's only one L available, and that is, you're right, 0. Very good. 0 represents S. Again, I apologize. Those uh, uh, parentheses should be down a little bit there. Anyway, if S is 0, then there's only one possible M sub L because there's only one address available, so that would be 0. That represents the one S orbital. We don't have to give it any different designation because there's always only one. Each orbital can only hold two electrons, so in the first energy level, since there's only an S subshell or an S orbital, really, then they can only have two electrons. And you probably remember that from earlier classes. Now, in the second energy level, uh, you can have an S and a P. 
Uh, and so that means that you can have an address of 0 for the S, and then the P has three possible addresses, negative 1, 0, and 1. Uh, the S orbital can hold 2, but the P subshell can hold 6, because it has three orbitals each that can hold 2, and that's why you have 8 electrons there. So I'll go ahead, and go ahead and pause the video and see if you can fill out the rest of the chart here. Okay, welcome back. Yes, on the third uh, energy level, we start ending up with a uh, D subshell. And a D subshell has five orbitals because it can go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, which means that that can hold 10 electrons. So we've got 2 plus 6 plus 10, so that's where you get the 18 electrons. And then really every energy level beyond that, uh, energy level 4 and beyond, you can have up to an F also. And so we have uh, uh, the F subshell having uh, 7 orbitals, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And so there you get the maximum at an energy level of 32 electrons. Now again, I... I that's sort of, it's very interesting. It's a good way to practice the code. I, I think trying to figure out the total number of electrons in an energy level is sort of a, a useless procedure, I guess, because that's not really relevant too much. Really what we're going to compare, care about are the valence electrons. That's pretty much the most important electrons. And that'll be dealing with actually the SNP subshells. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you'll see that coming. Uh, so what we'll do next time is we'll review this a little bit. We'll go through some electron uh, quantum number addresses, and you can make sure they're appropriate. Um, but, that, but that's more than enough for the second part of this lesson. So you've gone through all four quantum numbers and talked about the Pauli exclusion principle. And I think we can definitely call that a, a good two days. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.